Right now at six, skeletal remains lead to a homicide investigation in southeast Kansas. And we've got a clear and sunny warm day today, but we might have a chance of rain in the forecast. We'll talk about that coming up. Plus, a judge postpones an impeachment hearing against the mayor of Carthage. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 5 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Lindsay Gaffney. Yes, and it's Thursday, September 26th here in the four states. And something I didn't know until earlier today was that it's National Pancake Day. I'm not a fan of pancakes. Not a fan of oh, pancakes. I know, I know. I think everybody Then what's is. your breakfast of choice? Um, I like eggs and, yeah. you know, toast. More traditional. Yeah. I like waffles. Well, I don't know. Pancakes are just too soft for me. I, I, I kind of get that. Yeah. I do. You have to be in the mood for it. You do. Well, hopefully your day's going off to a good start and you're able to enjoy a big, yummy breakfast, whatever it is, whatever you enjoy. Starting and hopefully, the yeah. Off. Yeah. Starting and then off right with some weather, too. It's going to be a fantastic day today again. Let's go ahead and take a look outside. Starting off pretty cool in the mid to lower 50s. Clear skies, though, and you may encounter a little bit of fog on some back roads this morning, but overall it's going to be clear and a nice start to your day. Calm winds, not much going on today. Temperatures are going to warm up pretty quickly, though. We're starting off cooler, but by 10 a.m., upper 60s, and by 1 p.m., upper 70s. Our high is getting into the low 80s today, about 81, 80, uh, 80 degrees, 81 degrees. So a little bit warmer than what we saw yesterday, plus a couple of isolated shower chances, although they're very low chances, only about a 10% chance, but that's going to be Friday afternoon, and we can actually thank Hurricane Helene for that as the hurricane pushes closer to our area Friday. Now, it's making landfall tonight around 7 to 8 p.m. Winds over 120 miles per hour and as a Category 3 possible low end Category 4. So very strong storm that's pushing in and storm surge is going to be the most damaging part of the storm but as it pushes inland it actually has an effect with the already existing low pressure and you can see they kind of combine and that's called the Fujiwara effect so it's actually pulling the hurricane off to the west which is why we get the overcast conditions for most of the weekend and even those slight rain chances Friday afternoon very slight just a couple of sprinkles in our far eastern counties but I can give you all the details coming up in just a bit all right thanks Lindsay well, Kansas authorities have begun a homicide investigation after finding skeletal remains in rural Wilson County. Now, the Neota Shea Police Department requested KBI assistance after finding the remains Tuesday morning in the pasture east of 6554 Ottawa Road. Investigators confirmed the remains are human. While an autopsy has been scheduled, authorities say a positive identification may take some time. We'll have more details on our website, koamnewsnow.com, as they develop. Well, an SUV collides with a motorcycle on South Main Street in Joplin yesterday evening around 7.45. Now, the southbound lanes were closed at 43rd Street as the Joplin Police Major Crash Team began an investigation into what occurred. Injuries to those involved are not known, and the roadway reopened around midnight. The impeachment proceedings for the Carthage mayor scheduled for yesterday has been postponed. Now, Judge Kevin Selby granted a restraining order sought by Mayor Dan Reif and his attorney that has halted the hearing. There was an agreement for the city to hire Timothy Engelmeyer as the hearing officer when a date for the hearing was decided. Now, Reif's attorney says the city did not move quickly enough to hire the hearing officer. He considers this behavior suspect and says it violates Dan Rife's due process rights. On October 7th, there will be a new hearing to discuss the temporary restraining order. Well, the November election is just 40 days away and voters in Oklahoma have some issues to consider, including state amendments. One of those state question 834 concerns citizenship and voting. Now, it has a number of sponsors in both the Oklahoma Senate and House. The question follows the following wording. 
This measure amends Section 1 of Article 3 of the Oklahoma Constitution. It clarifies that only citizens of the United States are qualified to vote in this state. Now, the current section in the Oklahoma Constitution says all citizens of the U.S. over age 18 can vote, but there may be exceptions. A yes vote would clarify this section and would require someone to be a U.S. citizen in order to vote. A no vote would lead this, leave this section of this article written as is. The border and immigration has been one of the biggest issues on voters' minds. The state of Missouri has a similar question on its ballot this November. The issue of illegal immigration has recently seen more national attention, including stories out of Missouri. Recently, two illegal immigrants from Honduras were arrested following a murder in Jasper County and violent assaults in the Kansas City area. You can read more about this state question in Missouri and Oklahoma at koamnewsnow.com slash elections, or you can scan this QR code. A city owned grocery store in Erie, Kansas is going to be operated by a new company after years of struggling to stay open. The city is leasing the store to River Grocery LLC, which operates several stores in rural Kansas and Nebraska. The city of Erie bought the store in 2020 with hopes of keeping a local grocery store in the area. But according to city staff, owning the store is difficult and costly for the city, so the best thing for its future in town was to have someone else take it over. Yes, we have a Dollar General, but having a grocery store that has more options um, is something that we need to, to keep in the community. Um, so having somebody come in and want to take that over and run it, um, I was excited and um, glad that somebody was stepping forward and wanted to take on that um, challenge to be able to do that. Uh, the new market operator is working on hiring more staff as they'll be extending the store's hours. Now they hope to open the doors to the public in October. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOAM Morning News. Well, Disney is rolling out its password and account sharing crackdown to users this week. Plus, Helene is strengthened to a Category 1 hurricane overnight as it barrels towards Florida. And Lindsay Gaffney returns with another look at your Thursday forecast. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from Carthage, Missouri in the grand opening of the new Municipal Dog Park. Well, topping Nation Watch this morning. The start of the holiday shopping season is more than a month away and online spending is expected to break records. According to a new report from Adobe Analytics, shoppers are projected to spend $241 billion online this year. That's up 8% from last year and more than half of online sales will be on electronics, apparel, furniture and home goods. Sales analysts also project total retail sales both in person and online will grow around 3% during the last three months of the year. Well, Disney is officially cracking down on password and account sharing. This week, the company rolled out its page sharing program to users in many regions around the world, including the U.S. Now, according to a Disney blog post published on Wednesday, Disney Plus basic account holders will be able to add an extra user for $6.99 per month. Now, for Disney Plus premium accounts, adding a user will cost an extra $9.99 a month. Only one extra member will be allowed per account, and it's not available as part of the Disney bundle. The Federal Trade Commission is cracking down on businesses that use deceptive artificial intelligence to lure customers. In a new law enforcement sweep operation AI Comply, the FTC took action against companies it said used AI to trick, mislead, or defraud. Now, the alleged schemes included use of an AI tool that enabled customers to create fake reviews advertising for the world's first AI lawyer and AI-assisted e-commerce businesses, all of which are illegal, failed to deliver, and defrauded consumers 
of millions of dollars. Well, Helene strengthened to a Category 1 hurricane overnight with sustained winds around 85 miles per hour as it barrels towards Florida. Now, this storm is expected to intensify even more before it makes landfall sometime this evening. Mandatory evacuations have been ordered in some areas with many residents packing up and moving out before impact. Nicole Valdez has the latest from Tampa, Florida. Heavy winds and rain are already pounding Florida and parts of the southeast as Hurricane Helene hurdles towards Florida's Gulf Coast. I would suggest to, to get out. Uh, it's best to be safe uh, than sorry. Evacuation orders, some mandatory, are in effect for multiple counties. The National Hurricane Center predicts the storm could strengthen up to a powerful Category 3 or 4 by landfall with winds reaching over 110 miles per hour and deadly storm surges of 10 to 20 feet. You can hide from the wind and there will be significant wind on this storm, uh, but you got to run from the water. Frankie Johnson of Horseshoe Beach is not taking any chances. She says she's already lost everything in last year's Hurricane Idalia. They're saying this one's going to be worse than that one. There's probably not going to be much left. <laughs> So we're trying to, you know, trying to get our stuff out. An aqua fence has gone up around Tampa's General Hospital where many patients will stay put. It's actually safer to have them here with the care they need. Florida's governor as well as President Biden have already signed emergency declarations covering dozens of counties with FEMA teams already on the ground and ready to respond. We are going to have uh, a significant impact from this storm. Helene is also expected to hit other southeast states with severe flooding, heavy rain, and some possible tornadoes over the next couple of days. Nicole Valdez, CBS News, Tampa, Florida. Now already we're seeing airport closures in Tampa and multiple public school systems and universities closed in Florida and throughout the southeast for the next two days. Major League Baseball games between the New York Mets and Atlanta Braves have been postponed to next week. Now to look at some of today's top national stories, here's Lindsay with a look at the forecast. Well, we're starting off the morning. You can see downtown Pittsburgh clear skies and a cool start to the morning down about 53 degrees right now. Might be met with a little bit of fog, but mostly it's going to be clear all day long. Sunny skies, temperatures warming up to the lower 80s today. Overall, a fantastic day ahead of a pretty cloudy weekend. Well, a mural extending more than 700 feet is being painted in the Buckeye Wood Hill neighborhood in Cleveland. Michelle Jarbo has the details. Derek Brennan found his passion early. I was like 10 years old and I knew I wanted to be an artist. And, uh, you know, I just never looked back since then. His first canvases were small. I started originally as a caricature artist at Cedar Point. But he quickly moved on to bigger things. And this one is by far the biggest. It's very accessible to people. It's not, uh, it's not pretentious. You know, it's just, it's, it becomes part of the community. A massive mural in Cleveland's Buckeye Woodhill neighborhood on a brick wall that hides an RTA bus maintenance garage. It is 728 feet long. Despite the drizzle on Monday, I walked the mural with Alon Gonzalez. She grew up around here and still lives just a few minutes away. It's amazing. When you hit the corner, you can see the colors from all the way down the street. Now she's managing the project for Land Studio, a local nonprofit. People are honking their horns. They are stopping their cars. I mean, they're just elated to see color. I mean, this neighborhood deserves, deserves color. This project is about reflecting the history and culture of the Woodhill community at a time when the neighborhood is changing. Just across the street, the Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority is working with a developer and other partners to replace this aging public housing complex called Woodhill Homes with new mixed income apartments, rebuilding some blocks while clearing others. This is a chance to memorialize some areas that we, we won't see again, or at least we'll see them again in a different way. So I think that um, there was a sense of urgency there. To capture everyday moments. You see people getting their hair cut. You see people barbecuing. And paint the places neighbors wanted to preserve. The kids can see themselves in the, in the piece and uh, go to point at something that's gonna be here for, you know, 20 years. 
30 years. I think people just uh, feel seen, you know, with their imagery on the walls, stuff that they recognize. Chad Fedorovich is working with Derek, leading a small team. It keeps getting better as they work on it, kind of chiseling away some of the details and the colors. A project Derek hopes will help other aspiring artists dream big. What it was before is this, this giant brick wall that didn't have any life to it. And now? Every day people are driving by this and this is something that's going to brighten up their day a little bit. Well, a stunning mural, lots of talent there for sure. Now let's head over to Lindsay with a quick look at the forecast. Well, we're starting off the morning. Temperatures in the low 50s, clear skies all day long. We do warm up today, but overall it's going to be a fantastic day. Well, taking a look outside downtown Pittsburgh, it is a mostly clear morning. Temperatures are pretty cool in the lower 50s to start our day. Overall, it's going to be a really great day. Not a cloud in sight. Mostly sunny skies all day long. Temperatures are going to get up to the lower 80s though today. So we are warming up as we can see. The far eastern counties may be a little bit cooler. 78 Monette, Stockton, 79 in Cassville, Lamar, even Joplin. Joplin's pushing 80. Then we start to increase to the low 80s as we move off to the northwest. So 81 in Miami, Oswego Grove, 83 in Nevada, the warmest temperature out there in Nevada. Overall, pretty decent day, a little bit warmer than we saw yesterday. By 6 p.m. we're in the upper 70s and then we're dropping pretty quickly down to low 60s, upper 50s by midnight. We're going to stay in that upper to mid 50s degree range for our overnight low tonight and then tomorrow we're going to start to see some clouds pushing in. Now we're tracking the tropics because a uh, rare phenomenon brings Hurricane Helene all the way out to close to the Forest States region. So as of right now, only a category one hurricane, but quickly strengthening to a category three by later on this afternoon. And it makes landfall about 8 p.m. tonight with winds over 115, 120 miles per hour and an incredibly strong storm surge. But the interesting part about this hurricane is that there is a low pressure position to right here, Arkansas, east, western Tennessee, and even uh, Mississippi. As this hurricane makes landfall and pushes inland, it rotates to the west because we've got that low pressure. The rare phenomenon called the Fujiwara effect is pulling that hurricane closer to the already positioned low instead of pushing it up the east coast like it would normally go. So what happens is this low is going to continue to rotate around the already positioned low that is in Mississippi and Alabama that's pushing the rain and the clouds all the way to our four stage region way over here. So we're going to get those mostly cloudy skies a little after midnight tonight. And then those cloudy skies continue for most of the weekend, starting to clear out by Sunday. So we're going to see maybe a few showers even late Friday afternoon, maybe a few showers, 10% chance. I'm not expecting much before it finally rotates back out as that low is enveloped by the already positioned low and then moves out of our area. So tomorrow we can expect mostly cloudy skies and winds gusting up to about 40 miles per hour. So pretty windy day as well. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. So a little bit cooler than today because of those overcast conditions, but not much else going on for the rest of the week. Temperatures warm up to the mid 80s by Monday, then another cool down Tuesday, and then another warm up on Thursday, and then another cool down next weekend. But we're going to be mostly sunny pretty much the entire week, so it's a great week to plan some outdoor events. Now that's a look at your forecast. We'll go over to Elise with Health Watch. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, research from the University of Copenhagen shows artificial intelligence is better at predicting breast cancer risk than current clinical benchmarks for risk assessment. Now, the new technology was trained on breast tissue biopsies to look for so-called zombie cells, which are still metabolically active but have stopped dividing. Now, they are associated with cancer development. Researchers say use of the new AI in a clinical setting is still years away. Well, a new study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found more than 80% of pregnant women are iron deficient by their third trimester, despite 
having a generally good health and a high resource setting. Well, of the more than 600 Irish, Irish women who participated in the study, none were anemic in the first trimester of pregnancy. The study authors recommend doctors screen all pregnant women for iron deficiency. In September is National Suicide Prevention Month. Data from the National Center for Health Statistics shows suicide was the 11th leading cause of death for all ages in 2022, which is the same as it was the year before. It rates generally increased for females aged 25 and older from 2020 to 2022, and firearm use was the leading means of suicide death for women and men in 2022. If you or someone you know is in crisis, call or text the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. We'll be right back. Right now at 630, how grant money is footing the bill for a school resource officer in Columbus, Kansas. And we're in store for another warm and sunny day, plus some clouds in the forecast. We'll talk about that coming up. And kids in Carl Junction get a lesson from a four-legged teacher for World School Milk Day. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome <laughs> to the KOAM Morning News. It's 630. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Lindsay Gaffney. Yes, and thank you for joining us today, whether you're at home or on the go. Yesterday, we officially launched our KOAM Plus. Yes. 24 seven streaming service. So pretty cool, pretty cool news and weather anytime you 24 want it. 24 seven, it is pretty cool. I yeah. know that's like the new day and age. I know, it's, right? It's pretty <laughs> awesome that we get to do that. Um, and you get to hear all about the gorgeous day that we yes. have in store for us today. <laughs> Taking a look outside, temperatures are pretty cool down in the lower 50s to start the day. Now, you may be met with some early morning fog on some back roads, but overall it's gonna be a clear morning, clear day. Temperatures are gonna warm up. Now we're starting off in the low 50s, but we do warm up. Mostly sunny skies all day long, though. Not expecting much today. No clouds, not until later on this evening. Temperatures are going to warm up pretty quickly, starting by 10 a.m. in the mid to upper 60s, but by 1 p.m., upper 70s. And then our high for the day, upper 70s and low 80s. So we're warmer than we were yesterday. And pretty nice. Now we do have some slight rain chances in the forecast as we move into tomorrow couple of isolated pop up chances there and that's due to the Hurricane Helene as it moves into the area now making landfall later on this evening. You can see it down in the Florida coast winds up to 120 miles per hour storm surge 10 to 15 feet. So incredibly dangerous storm and as it pushes in, it interacts with an already positioned low that pulls the hurricane over to the four states region. So we're going to start to see some clouds pushing in early morning Friday or late tonight, and we're going to have mostly cloudy skies continue all weekend long. Now we saw that there was a slight chance of rain in the far eastern counties. We may get a couple of sprinkles, but for the most part, we're just going to get those overcast conditions as this low it combines with the already positioned low, it's going to continue to shift off to the east. And then we've got that ridge forming over the area for the rest of the weekend. So we've got a warm up in the forecast as well. A lot of things going on this weekend and I'll have more details coming up. All right, we'll see you soon, Lindsay. Well, Columbus, Kansas received a $125,000 grant from the U.S. Department of Justice to fund a school resource officer for the Highland Education Center. Now, the funding will cover the position for the next three years with the idea to have the city fund the position themselves afterward. Now, a current resource officer says the position is extremely helpful in keeping students and teachers safe. If they are doing something that is unsafe uh, or they are creating an environment where the other kids cannot learn uh, at that point, they need to be separated from the other students. Now Luke says after the three years are up, he hopes the city will apply for more grants or just fund the role outright. Well, Pineville Primary School cut the ribbon on some new buildings yesterday. The event celebrated the opening of a state of the art storm shelter and multi purpose room, as well as offices for the district student services division. 
Now the new offices will house staff who serve the district's special education students. Prior to the shelter's construction, the school lacked any formal protection from storms. Before, um, we had to crawl into bathrooms to sticky floors. And, you know, it wasn't the safest environment for our children when we do have storms. And storms are, you know, very prevalent in our area. And so for us to be able to come in a safe, tight facility that we absolutely know is going to be essential for our littlest foreigners, that, that gives us a peace of mind. The storm shelter was part of the $21.5 million bond issue passed by voters in 2022. Now, the shelter is one of six new facilities being completed across the district in the coming year. Well, some students at Mark Twain Elementary in Webb City received a very wordy gift yesterday. The Webb City Carl Junction Rotary Club gave every third grader a dictionary thanks to the Dictionary Project. The close to 600 dictionaries will be distributed to every third grader in Webb City and Carl Junction school districts. The student's dictionary, it has the longest word in the English language. There's over 1,900 letters and, and the kids usually love that. There's a section on Braille and on, the, and on the sign language and they love that. Every president, every state, every um, country in America, you can find out different facts. The Dictionary Project continues this week. Now today, students will receive dictionaries at the Harry S. Truman Elementary School in Webb City and at Carterville Elementary in Webb City. And on Friday, dictionaries will go to kids in Carl Junction. During the uh, 21 years of this project, third grade students in Webb City and Carl Junction have received more than 12,000 dictionaries. Well, the annual Paint the Town Red event was last night to support the Webb City Cardinals. The event started with a parade, then attendees went to the bonfire, which included a DJ and a bounce house. Fans gathered around the bonfire to listen to music and play games to celebrate the upcoming game against Neo Show. Uh, it's pretty fun, you know. We come out here every year for homecoming. Uh, you know, the old bonfire going, see some friends. Pretty fun. They got games, they got sports, they got everything. They got food. Now the game against Neosha will take place this Friday night at 7 p.m. Well, kindergarten school kids in Carl Junction got some hands on learning yesterday when they found out where milk comes from. Those kids also got to learn about the importance of the dairy food group on this World School Milk Day yesterday. A cow named Tasha helped teach the kids how the milk they drink ends up on their breakfast table. Help them understand that their milk comes from a cow and that there are dairy farmers across the nation working hard every single day to make sure that the most nutritious and delicious product is available to them every day. The first World School Milk Day was held back in 2000. More than 40 countries around the world celebrate the occasion. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. Contract talks over wage increases are set to resume between Boeing and striking union members. And we have another nice and sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Lindsay Gaffney in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from Carthage, Missouri, and the grand opening of the new municipal dog park. And Consumer Watch this morning. The federal judge has approved a $600 million class action settlement for residents impacted by last year's catastrophic Norfolk Southern train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. 
Now, anyone who lived within two miles of the disaster can get up to $70,000 per household for property damage, plus another $25,000 per person for health problems. Now, lawyers say the decision clears the way for payments to start going out before the end of the year. Well, contract talks are set to resume between Boeing and striking union machinists on Friday. More than 30,000 workers walked off the job at the company's plants in Washington State and Oregon nearly two weeks ago. This week, Boeing raised its pay increase offer from 25 to 30 percent over four years plus bonuses. And Meta has unveiled its most affordable mixed reality headset to date. The Quest 3S, which hits store shelves next month with a price tag starting at $299. Now, the headset has features for watching TV and movies, fitness and gaming. Meta also showed off its augmented reality glasses prototype Orion, which is the Czech giant that says will combine AI the real world. And that's it for Consumer Watch. Here's Lindsay with another look at your forecast. Well, it is going to be a gorgeous day. You can see 7th and Range Line, a really great looking sunrise today. Temperatures are in the lower 50s to start the day off. You might be met with a little bit of fog, but for the most part, it's going to clear out quickly, and that's only on back roads. Other than that, we're looking at a very clear day and a nice, sunny, warm day today. Temperatures getting up to the uh, low 80s, upper 70s across the region. As you can see, not a cloud in sight. We do start to see some clouds pushing in from Hurricane Helene later on this evening and into the overnight hours. Mostly cloudy skies for the weekend as well. So overall, not expecting a ton of weather today or tomorrow. Maybe a few sprinkles because of Hurricane Helene. But for the most part, we're just going to see clouds roll in tonight and stick around for most of the weekend. Temperatures go on a warming trend through the weekend as well. So this is just the start. Low 80s today is going to be the start of that warming trend, and that continues again through Monday. Overall, it's going to be a great looking day and after the clouds clear out a great looking weekend. Now it's almost time to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. They're up after the break, but first let's see what's happening on CBS mornings. I'm Adriana Diaz coming up on CBS mornings two time Oscar winner Kate Blanchett joins us to talk about her new mini series disclaimer and former NFL star Vernon Davis will tell us about his new memoir and life after football. All that's coming up on CBS mornings. Well, it's time to celebrate some Thursday birthdays here in the four states, starting out with Caden Wolverton in Parsons celebrating birthday number six. Happy birthday. And celebrating his ninth birthday, Blaine Mettler out in Sarcoxy, Missouri as well. Also celebrating their ninth birthday is Annalyn Kaufman pictured here. The prize winning chicken. Now it says here, happy birthday from grandma, papa, Bet singer, mom, dad, and Wyatt. And we've got a 25th birthday for Shelby Smith out in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Plus, Shelby is a twin and celebrating his 25th birthday as well. Grant Smith, happy birthday to the twins out there. And a happy birthday to Nicole Stripling and turning 29 today. It says here with love from your family. Happy birthday. And celebrating Aaron O'Brien, 33rd birthday out in Liberty, Kansas. It says love you, Uncle Fred and Auntie. And a happy birthday to Kaylee Newman over in Riverton, celebrating birthday number 34. Happy birthday. And celebrating his 40th birthday, Cole High School from Stockton, Missouri. Happy birthday, Cole. And happy 40th birthday to Emily Bracking in Carthage. Earl Eddington is celebrating his 86th birthday out in Columbus, Kansas. Happy birthday, Earl. And happy 49th anniversary to Steve and Pam Jacquino in St. Paul. And a, another birthday for Frankie Box. Happy birthday, Frankie, on Columbus, Kansas. And continuing the list with Lloyd and Joyce Woods over in Baxter Springs, 
celebrating their 65th anniversary. What a big one there. Happy anniversary, you two. And what a great birthday list. Happy anniversary and birthday to everyone that celebrated with us. And if you'd like to celebrate your birthday or anniversary, you can submit it to birthdays at koamnewsnow.com. Be sure to, of course, meet the deadline that you see there at the bottom of your screen and to include those photos and messages as well. Now let's head over to Lindsay with a full look at the forecast. Well, taking a look downtown Pittsburgh, it is a gorgeous sunrise today. Clear skies. You can see traffic is starting to pick up as well. It's about 6.45, getting closer to 7 a.m. Starting off the morning, 7th and Range Line, another gorgeous sunrise picture. So starting off the day, you can see not a cloud in sight. Very clear morning, maybe a little bit of fog on some back roads. But overall, it's a great start to this Thursday. Temperatures are going to warm up, but otherwise clear skies, nice day temperatures in the upper 70s in the eastern counties and then creeping into the 80s in the western counties. Nevada is our warmest county out there, city out there, uh, 83 degrees. Joplin about 79 to 80 degrees as well. So we're warming up today and we continue to warm up through the week as well. Overnight lows tonight. A little bit warmer than yesterday as well, about 77 degrees by 6 p.m. and then quickly dropping down to the low 60s by midnight. And we're getting down to upper 50s to mid 50s for overnight low. Now we started off this morning in the low 50s, so we're creeping up into the warmer temperatures as we move into the weekend, plus some cloudy skies for the weekend as well. We can thank Hurricane Helene as it pushes closer. Now it is currently a category two hurricane and quickly strengthens to a category three by later on this afternoon. Now, as it makes landfall, they still have it as a category three that could be even pushing low end category four. It's going to be a very strong hurricane with winds well over 115 miles per hour by the time it makes landfall and 10 15 foot storm surge. So very strong. That's making landfall later on this evening around 8 9 p.m although it's already getting a lot of rain and a lot of winds. Now, the interesting part about this hurricane is there is a low pressure that was already positioned in the southeast and the southern states, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas. And normally what we see with a hurricane is it pushes up towards the northeast and moves up the east coast, especially for a hurricane as strong as this one. But the rare phenomenon called the Fujiwara effect pulls that low off to the west following the already positioned low. So it's a pretty interesting phenomenon that's happening that's actually giving us some clouds and slight, very slight rain chances. So by later on Friday afternoon, you can see where the rain creeps up just very close to our county's borders. So we might get some sprinkles in our far eastern counties, maybe Cassville, Monette, but other than that, it's mostly going to be just cloudy skies and that rolls in early Friday morning or late tonight. Other than that, the low starts to pull back. Now we're still dealing with the overcast conditions all the way through Sunday morning, but that low will continue to pull back to the northeast and we clear out by Sunday. But tomorrow still going to be mostly cloudy. Winds are also very strong up to about 40 mile per hour wind gusts through Friday evening. Temperatures are pretty cool though. Today we're getting to the lower 80s, but tomorrow we're dropping back down a little bit because those overcast conditions keep us cool, blocking out the sun's radiation. So another cool day, but it's going to be dreary, pretty cloudy, and it's going to be cloudy on Saturday as well. Now clouds clear out by Sunday, but temperatures warm up to the mid 80s by Monday. Cool down again Tuesday and then we warm right back up through Thursday. So we've got a couple of chances of some cooler days in the forecast, but no rain chances. It's going to be mostly sunny all week long. So if you have any plans for outdoor activities, this week would be the week to do it with slightly warmer temperatures, but great sunny skies all week long. Now let's look at your forecast coming up when KOEM morning news switches on over to Fox 14. We'll see how a California organization trains farm hands to become fully functional farmers themselves. Well, here's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. Kansas authorities have begun a homicide investigation after finding skeletal remains in a rural Wilson County. The Neodosha Police Department requested KBI assistance after finding the remains Tuesday morning. 
in a pasture east of 6554 Ottawa Road. Investigators confirm the remains are human, while an autopsy has been scheduled. Authorities say a positive identification may take some time. And the impeachment proceedings for the Carthage Mayor Dan Rife have been postponed. Judge Kevin Selby granted a restraining order sought by Rife and his attorney, which has halted the hearings. The Rife's attorney says the city did not move quickly enough to hire Timothy Engelmeiger as the hearing officer for the impeachment. He considers this behavior suspect and says it violates Dan Rife's due process rights. Kansas, Columbus, Kansas received a $125,000 grant from the U.S. Department of Justice to fund a school resource officer for the Highland Education Center. The funding will cover the position for the next three years with the idea to have the city fund the position themselves afterwards. Now, a current resource officer says the position is extremely helpful in keeping students and teachers safe. And that's a look and in today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Well, as we move into the weekend, today is looking pretty good. Temperatures in the low 80s, upper 70s, cooling down a bit Friday, but it's going to be mostly cloudy skies Friday, Saturday, all the way until Sunday morning. Overall, the next week, week and a half, it's going to be pretty average, low 80s, upper 70s, sunny skies all week long as well. A pretty fantastic week to plan any outdoor activities. Absolutely. All righty, well, coming up today at noon, we're making orzo mushroom toss in the Mr. Foo Test Kitchen. And your morning news continues on KOEM with CBS Mornings. Or you can switch on over with us on Fox 14 where your only local morning news continues. This morning, the city of Columbus, Kansas receives a grant to fund a school resource officer for the Highland Education Center. Plus, Emily from Connect Cult to Culture, excuse me, us in this talks to us in the studio about the events that they have coming up. But that'll wrap it up for now. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. And we'll see you today at noon.